Avian flu is a form of influenza that circulates in wild bird populations. Over the past few years, though, we've been seeing more and more infections in domesticated poultry, infections of dairy cows, and in the U.S., over 80 infections of humans with H5N1 just in the last 12 months. Prior to that, we only had one infection in the last 25 years. My lab tries to study the viruses that are currently circulating in humans, and we also study emerging viruses like the avian flu H5N1. Yeah. We use something called primary respiratory epithelial cell cultures to mimic the cells that line your respiratory tract and are the primary targets of those respiratory viruses. We work really closely with clinicians to get specimens from people who are infected. We take those viruses, we grow them up, and we characterize how they're infecting, how many new virus particles are made, how their expression of proteins and other things is happening. All of those parameters, because any advancement that we make in terms of an antiviral or a vaccine is usually based on years and years of basic research uh, into just general mechanisms of virus replication and their ability to cause disease. Respiratory viruses have an ability to mutate or introduce changes into their genes. That's what we're seeing right now with the H5N1 avian flu viruses. We're seeing mutations that we think will cause those viruses to replicate better in humans, and that's really putting us on our top guard. And it's really important to realize private philanthropy really forms some of the seed funding to do those first few experimental systems to really solidify an idea and allow you to then go to the federal funding agencies with a much more stronger and complete case for why this research needs to continue to be funded. In fact, a gift from the Eliasberg Family Foundation was instrumental in recruiting me here to Johns Hopkins, but also helped us establish our Center of Excellence in Influenza Research and Response. And we've been able to put resources towards outbreaks um, faster than normal because that foundation support is there. And while we've seen infections with H5N1 in humans, what we haven't seen yet is spread of the avian flu from person to person. And that's the real trigger that would concern us in terms of a, a pending pandemic. We're a bit more prepared for an H5N1 pandemic than we were for COVID-19 because Basic research efforts have provided us with antivirals. They've provided us with the blueprint for how to make a good flu vaccine. But now is the time to act to limit its infection and its disease potential.